February 2004, MySpace.com officially launches. Former venture capitalist analyst and internet columnist Nissan Gabe profiled MySpace keys to success in Startup Review. Through personal interviews with early MySpace insiders, Gabe asserts that MySpace did not begin to see user success until six to nine months after initial launch, after deploying a combination of tactics, including traditional cost per acquisition campaign through established online brands. Also, according to Gabay's sources and research, affiliate marketing partnerships with already strong internet properties is what propelled MySpace from initial traction into runaway success. It is unlikely that MySpace would have grown as fast as it did without employing this more traditional marketing tactic. July 15, 2004 E-Universe changes its name to Intermix Media Company. By this time, the site reaches 2 million member profile. December 2004. MySpace.com pulls past Friendster.com as the most visited social networking site on the internet according to Alexa. By this time, the site reaches 4 million member profile. April 28, 2005. The state of New York files a lawsuit against Intermix Media, alleging the firm was the source of spyware and adware that had been installed on millions of home computers. The suit is heralded as the most sweeping case to date involving programs that redirect web address, add toolbars, and deliver pop-up ads. When questioned about the case, New York State Attorney Elliot Spitzer declares, spyware and adware are more than an annoyance. These fraudulent programs, foul machines, undermine productivity and in many cases frustrate consumers' efforts to remove them from their computers. These issues can serve to be a hindrance of the growth of e-commerce. June 2005 Intermix Media settles its lawsuit with the state of New York for $7.5 million. By this time, the site reaches 22 million member profile. July 2005, Media Mega House News Corporation announces its purchase of Intermix Media, signaling old media recognition of the power of social networking. Tom Anderson and Krista Wolf hit the media circuit as corporate cheerleaders and poster children of Web 2.0 startups. In the media blitz, little if any attention is brought to the fact that MySpace.com is not a startup and rather is nothing more than a corporate project of a publicly traded corporation that happened to find success through leveraging traditional internet marketing channels and its access to capital. By this time, the site reaches 22 million member profile. December 2005. MySpace blocks YouTube, angering many MySpace users who suspect News Corp and MySpace of being afraid of YouTube taking over MySpace's hold as the number one destination for young internet users. By this time, the site reaches 43 million member profiles. July 2006 MySpace surpasses Yahoo Mail as the most visited domain on the internet for U.S. internet users. By this time, the site reaches 90 million member profiles. July 2006. MySpace blocks YouTube again. Again, users revolt and MySpace is forced to back down from its strong-handed, anti-competitive tactics. By this time, the site reaches 90 million member profiles. August 7, 2006. Google and MySpace enter an exclusive search agreement worth $900 million over three years. By this time, the site reaches 100 million member profiles. December 2006, MySpace Mobile launches, signaling the arrival of the social networking giant to the uncharted domain of cellular handsets. By this time, the site reaches 138 million member profiles. January 2007, MySpace blocks all flash widgets from its site for two and a half hours. In an unprecedented move for the social networking giant, it prevents users from adding or editing any existing flash widgets. Though the company later rolls back the block and blames the outage on developer error, questions arise about the corporation's true commitment to its users. February 2007, MySpace blocks iMeme. Widgets from iMeme.com, a rapidly expanding social network focused around music, video, and file sharing, are wiped clean from MySpace pages. Additionally, references 
to iMeme are censored by MySpace's blacklist, replacing the name of the site with the ominous dot dot, signaling a new era in censorship for MySpace. By this time, the site reaches 160 million member profiles. May 2007. After months of contentious widget blocking, MySpace purchases Photobucket for $250 million, plus $50 million in incentive. The acquisition is the first of this type for MySpace and signals MySpace's acceptance of its inability to simply ignore or block competitors. At this time, the site reaches 180 million member profiles. In three short years, MySpace.com has transformed itself from a social networking also run to a major player on the internet. Amazingly, Intermix Media has successfully distanced itself from its unsavory adware and spammy past to position its flagship property, MySpace, as a purely organic phenomenon led by Tom Anderson and to a lesser extent, Krista Wolf. Very little attention has been brought to the fact that MySpace is not a startup, but the brainchild of a robust corporation that utilized sophisticated and targeted internet marketing techniques to grow MySpace into the number one destination on the internet. Now flush with cash and backed by one of the largest media conglomerates in the world, it should be interesting to see whether MySpace's future will be as secretive and shady as its past.